and now to the main news. The Ogun state government will continue to intensify efforts in opening up the canals in order to contain volumes of flash flood across the state. The special advisor to Governor Dakwa Biodun on Environment, Ola Oresonya, made the disclosure following the heavy rainfall that affected some parts of Abeokuta on Monday. Details are in this package. The heavy downpour on Monday, 26 June 2022, resulted in flash flooding in some parts of Abeokuta, the Ogun state capital. The rain came barely a few months after the state government predicted high density of rainfall in some parts of the state. It was gathered that the residents in some areas lost valuables to the flash flood while movement of vehicles were hampered for hours in other areas. We want to appreciate the Ogun State government. We have been seeing a lot of progress happening in our area, starting from Olumuri Junction. The road is constructing right now. It has been uh, a very tremendous achievement. At, time, at a particular time, they sent the Minister of Works to come and assess this bridge that has just broken now. We want him to come and assist us with this bridge, the only bridge linking us with Abekuta. In his reaction, the special advisor to Governor Dakwa Abiodun on environment, Ola Oresonya, said the government is leaving no stone unturned to arrest the situation. And I was on the phone myself with the engineers, some of our areas where we saw Shagamu, Jabudi. You will see many buildings, people are coaching because during the dry season, you will see the land that is dried. Not only really that, these are air flood. I mean, flood plains. When it rain, water will come and take over the area. However, there are some genuine cases of uh, urban renewal when it comes to flood. I mean, the, uh, I mean, um, or drainage redesigning. There are some areas where the drainage pattern in the area have not been properly designed. So we have a, a committee in the state to see the holistic plan of what we call the drainage uh, 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 plan for the entire state. He then enjoined the residents to desist from dumping refuse into drainages in order to avert flooding during the rainy season. I think I got to hear about that habit they call Omiyak Belo. When you now start seeing the rain, you know, as you go and bring refuse over, yeah, we had be law. We, we've said this several times. It's becoming like a broken record. Then we've said it several times. And one of the key things we want to do in that regard is to make sure that we make everybody pay for waste. Ola Ore Soya retweeted that Prince Dagbo Abiodun's administration is resolved to continuously protect lives and properties in the state and advised residents to adhere to environmental sanitation laws to achieve a cleaner and edier society. The Senate has confirmed seven persons nominated as ministers by President Muhammad Buhari. They were confirmed on Wednesday following a screening at the upper chamber of the National Assembly. The exercise was presided over by Senate President Ahmed Lawan. The development came days after President Buhari appointed the ministers and wrote to the Senate seeking their confirmation. Four of the newly confirmed ministers are from four southeast states, with one appointee each from the northwest, southwest, and south south regions. The new appointees include Henry Ikechuku, Abia State, Umana Okon, Umana, Aqua Ibom State, Ekuma Joseph, Eboin State, Goodluck Nana Obia, Imo State, Omar Ibrahim Yakub, Kano State, Adimola Adewoli, Adeguriu Yondo State, and Odo Udi River State. They were named following the resignation of some cabinet members who quit their positions to seek elective posts and the just concluded primary elections of the All Progressive Congress APC. The federal government, through the Nigerian High Commission in the United Kingdom, has engaged the services of lawyers to defend embattled Senator Iki Ekoramadu and his wife Beatrice. President of the Senate, Hakmad Lawan, disclosed this while speaking on the outcome of a one-hour closed session held before plenary on Wednesday. 
Recall that Ekwere Madu and his wife have been detained by the specialist crime team of the Metropolitan Police over an alleged conspiracy to harvest the organs of a minor. The couple was arraigned before the Yooks Bay Magistrates Court in London two days later and remanded in prison custody. The Ekwere Madus reportedly facilitated the, the UK travel of one David Uwamini Upo for the purpose of donating one of his kidneys to save the life of their ailing daughter, Sonia. However, Upo approached UK authorities claiming to be a 15-year-old involuntary donor, although the Ekwere Madus insists he's a 21 year old man who went to the uk out of his own volition the couple will reappear in court on july 7. the senate has disclosed that a high-powered delegation would leave to the united kingdom following the arrest of the former deputy president of the senate senator Ike ikeko Ramadu, and his wife beatrice following the alleged reported organ harvest against the Ikori Madus. Speaking shortly after a closed-door session of the Senate, the President of the Senate, Senator Hakman Lawan, who said that the delegation of the upper chamber will be made up of members of the Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs, led by Senator Adamo Bokachua, mandated the members to liaise with the Nigerian High Commission in London to get briefs on the matter. Lawan, who noted that the Senate will continue to engage the Nigerian High Commission on the matter relating to Ekwere Madu, said that he had a robust engagement with the Nigerian High Commissioner Ambassador Ishola Sharafa on the alleged organ harvesting, adding that as senators, they will continue to support their colleague. Resolutions of the Senate came on the heels of a motion about the arrest of the former Deputy Senate President and his wife in London last week over charges of conspiracy and organ harvest. The House of Representatives has constituted an hard hoc committee to investigate the petroleum product subsidy regime between 2017 and 2021 by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NNPC. This is followed by the adoption of a motion by Sagios Ogun on the floor of the House in Abuja. In his motion, Ogun said he was informed that as of 2002, the NNPC purchased crude oil at international market prices, which stood at 445,000 barrels per day. He added that it was to enable it to provide petroleum products for local consumption, saying he was concerned that as of 2002, the installed capacity of Nigeria's local refineries stood at 445,000 barrels per day. He, however, said that the capacity utilization began to nosedive and eventually fell completely to zero due to the ineffectiveness and alleged corruption of critical stakeholders in the value chain. The lawmaker said that due to a decline in the production capacity of the refineries, NNPC found it more convenient to export domestic crude in exchange for petroleum products on a trade by barter basis. The House of Representatives has reintroduced the controversial Water Resources Bill. The sponsor, Honorable Sada Soli, said wide consultations have been made for a better version of the bill. He assured that if at any point indications suggest that it will negatively affect any section of the country, he will voluntarily withdraw the bill. The Water Resources will, Bill was first introduced in the 8th Assembly but was rejected by the lawmakers. It was then reintroduced in the Ninth Assembly, but received backlash from a broad section of Nigerians and legislators who feared that it could endanger the unity of the country. The bill seeks to bring all water resources, surface and underground, and the banks of the water resources under control of the federal government. It has been read for the first time and will be debated when it is scheduled for the second reading. Traditional rulers have called on political leaders as well as Nigerians to exhibit the right kind of attitude towards the fast approaching 2023 general elections for the progress of the country. They believed that all hands must be on deck 
stating that every stakeholder should contribute a quota to the success of the poll. Our reporter spoke with some top traditional rulers in Ogun State in this special report. With dates for the 2023 Nigeria general elections now set by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, the Presidential and National Assembly polls set for February 25, 2023. Governorship and other subnational elections scheduled for March 11. The countdown is well underway for what will be the seventh consecutive elections since the return to democracy in 1999. This represents 23 years of unbroken democracy, the longest period in the country's history. The 2023 elections will be conducted under a new electoral framework, the Electoral Act 2022, which allows INEC to review results made under duress or financial inducement, extend the time for campaigns from 90 to 150 days, and provides for the use of technology to determine the mode of voting and transmission of results. It remains a major concern for stakeholders as results from the 2023 polls are a major determinant in sensitive areas of the country. Traditional rulers say they are readily available to serve as guardians for willing Nigerians. The law establishing Obas Council says they must ask us for areas to advise them. We don't have the right to advise them. That's what the law says. I'd like to see them come and say, please, we have problems with this area. Please advise us. Known nationwide for his vibrant advocacy for democracy, some traditional rulers called on politicians to tread the path of Moshud Kashimawu Abiola, the winner of the 1993 June 12 presidential election. The first thing is humility, <laughs> humility, and the ability to build bridges um, across every divide, Christian, Muslim. Our politicians need to uncover that, you know. And so long, we're not God. Politicians should, um, should emulate steadfastness, his uh, ability to galvanize people, his ability to reach to every nook and cranny of this country, irrespective of religion, ethnic background. They should learn to be fair because they are fixed time to govern us and history will judge all of us. So politicians should ensure that they better our lives. That's a payback time. But before they pay you back, you've got to do a lot of work, you know, and touch as many human beings as possible, many lives as possible. They also agreed it is pertinent to note that Nigerians as an individual entity have their part to play. If the lost glory of democracy in Nigeria's political system will be restored, the people that are capable of leading us well should be our priority. Because any attempt to be deceived by money bags will not develop our democracy. So I'm calling on all Nigerians to please shun violence and shun money back so that we can develop our democracy. Across the country, the expectation is high as Nigerians are anticipating the process and the outcome of the 2023 general elections. An Oyo State High Court sitting in Ibadan has restrained members of the State House of Assembly from continuing with further impeachment proceedings against the state's Deputy Governor, Ralph Olanio. The court, presided over by Justice Oladinro Akintola, ordered the lawmakers to stop further process against the Deputy Governor. It was gathered that the Assembly was built to read Olanio's response to the allegations leveled against him on Wednesday morning.
The Nigerian army will continue to engage the services of its retired personnel in tackling insecurity in the country. The Chief of Army Staff Corps, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, has said. Yahaya said this at a regimented dinner he organized for the 2021 set of retired officers from his three division, Rukuba near Jos. The Corps, who was represented by Major General Ibrahim Ali, the general officer commanding the division and commander operation safe haven thanked the retired personnel for their sacrifices and commitment to duty while in service he explained that the expertise of the retired personnel will be needed towards supporting the nigerian army in its bid to end all forms of insecurity in the country the corps assured the personnel still serving to put in their best in securing the territory and integrity of the nation and promised to make their welfare top of its priorities. The European Union EU has stated that it will be prioritizing Nigeria, Mozambique, Angola and Senegal in its bid to fast tracking energy transition into renewables on the continent. The EU ambassador to Nigeria, Samuela Ishopi, at a press conference to announce its eighth edition of the EU Business Forum scheduled to hold on 30th of June to 1st July 2022, explained that under its European external strategy launched recently, it is targeting Nigeria and three countries by diversifying suppliers and fast-tracking energy transition into renewables. Ishopi maintained that its member states were already reaching out to these countries to fast track the energy transition process. She, however, tasked the Nigerian government to address its infrastructure and security challenges to boost gas export to Europe. The pressure on the foreign exchange market continued with the dollar exchanging at 116 Naira at the parallel market in Lagos and Abuja. This is even as the percentage of local raw materials sourced by Nigerian manufacturers declined at 52.4% in 2021 from 57.5% obtained in 2022. According to data from the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, research showed that a dollar sold for 613 Naira and 614 Naira at Zone 4 in the Federal Capital Territory Abuja, but the rate was 615 Naira at Amuwa Dauphin and Lagos airports. At Abuja Airport, a dollar was sold for 615 Naira. The situation was different at the Importers and exporters window where a dollar went for 415 naira, 64 kobo, putting the margin between the official and the parallel market at 199 naira, 36 kobo. But the change players said dollars were becoming increasingly scarce and the price could get to 700 naira before the end of the year.